Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target Morning Brief for Investment Fighter Power Precision on a daily basis. Today, we're going to talk about micro strategy, which is the ticker MSTR. And I still owe you guys the piece on a cryptocurrency, but I'll give kind of a, an abbreviated uh, take on it uh, this morning because MSTR, MSTR has been in play. Uh, if you've heard me talk about this name before, it is a proxy for Bitcoin. Uh, it is how I'm uh, being involved with Bitcoin. Uh, and I have changed my tune. I treat Bitcoin and, well, cryptocurrencies in the same mindset as uh, precious metals. Not really as a store of value. I'm kind of off of that thesis, uh, which I thought that that was the best thesis out there for a while. But really, it's because, well, we'll get back to that. But you can go up to 10% in your portfolio in uh, I'd say stick with the big names of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is the two we're going to talk about today. So again, I don't hold it outright, but I do hold a proxy, which is MSTR. MSTR is MicroStrategy. It is a software company. Michael Saylor is the CEO, and he's, I've, I'm sure I've said that he's crazy before. I think he uh, he's probably still crazy, but I think he's probably crazy right. Uh, and it's got a significant amount of my money kind of riding on that that thesis. So, uh, and if you're with me and you have an aggressive account, you're already in it, uh, whether you've noticed or not. Uh, kind of the second tier there is Ethereum, uh, which I consider second to Bitcoin. It is in market cap, but uh, there's reasons why people like Ethereum better. Uh, pro protocol, smart contracts, 2.0. Uh, you can get smart on that on your own, but the um the whole theory there is again if you're going to hold one you might as well hold the other e-t-e-e-t-h-e -E -E is the uh the grayscale version of the um, trust like we were in gbtc which is the bitcoin trust but i didn't like the fees i have not found a better way to be at ethereum than just just pay the fees uh with the uh, graystone folks i think i called them grayscale there sorry about that graystone all right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. As far as our question of the day, we're talking about catch-up contributions. If you happen to be over 50, you can make a catch-up contribution to your IRAs. We're going to talk about those numbers, plus some of the new tax laws that are coming out and potentially changing. And I think this will get passed as part of however they package it. But it's going to get passed to where these are going to increase. So we're going to look at the, uh, the larger numbers that they're looking at there. All right. As far as the day trading stuff, long, we have W, which is Wayfair. We have uh, SYRS and, and HiMax. Those are all earnings beats and they're tracking higher. Wayfair kind of turned on us a few minutes ago, but uh, it may not work. Maybe we switch to a HiMax as if you saw the screen uh, that I had pulled up ahead of time. That's my number one. And then uh, shorts out there, Etsy, Roku, and Uber, uh, all on uh, earnings related issues and uh, really mostly subscriber, not necessarily earnings. They're kind of all beating earnings, uh, but it's really with their other important metrics uh, like followers and subscribers and new, uh, new eyeballs, that sort of thing. Um, and then another possible long out there I've been watching all morning is after a record 400,000 days in a row that win has been down it has now turned the corner they beat earnings last night and it looks like they guided up uh, they're up a couple percent this morning uh you know so you're you've made a, a fraction of the money you you're down um which puts me in a bind right so now i kind of have to stick with them because uh the buy ratings are coming out of the uh the woodwork now so it's kind of like crap kind of wanted to be done with win but now uh guess what we're in it all right uh that's uh what we're going to talk about today uh, if you're catching us on uh, replay, thank you so much. Please subscribe, hit the notifications bell. If you want to join us in a room, which you don't see as a chat window and a Q&A window, uh, for my folks to ask me questions real time on anything you would like. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back, everybody. Here is the lineup card for today, Thursday, August 5th. All right. The standard disclaimer applies. This is a financial education presentation. You have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear in this presentation. Full disclaimer information is available to OTOTnow.com. All right. Our mission objective is grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. Uh, this is not updated, so I'll type while I talk here. But long-term investment topics is, are going to be uh, the micro strategy MSTR, which is MSTR and Ethereum, 
And we're going to talk about those and how you can put those in your portfolio. And a little bit of the, the tax law, this infrastructure bill has cryptocurrency tax law stuff baked into it, right? Um, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, there's no specific stuff baked into it, but what they're doing is they're baking in some protocols for taxing uh, crypto. And again, that's crypto you hold outright. What I like about holding MSTR or Ethereum is that all the taxation is 100% straightforward because you're holding an actual position in a brokerage account. So it's uh, very easy and you don't have to worry about getting sideways uh, with the tax folks. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about there. We already talked about the catch-up provisions. We'll look at the actual numbers and proposals here in a little bit. All right, our flow is going to be long, short, open, short, long, which means we're going to take a look at the market review. I'll go around the headline review. We had a good jobs number this morning to match the nasty one we had yesterday, but market didn't care, right? Right back on up. Here we go. Um, and also we're in the green across the board based off of that this morning and a slew of good earnings. I still think it's like 80 plus percent of the companies that are releasing earnings are beating earnings, what's really moving stocks is how they guide, whether they guide those long-term forecasts up or down. Um, I think everybody's being cautious. I don't think they want to make this big earnings guide up in the face of the Delta variant and tax uh, changes. So I think, I think it's just, you know, adults being adults and not getting too crazy with the uh, forward forecast there. All right, long-term investments look at two charts, the MSTR and Ethereum. <clears throat> we'll get into short-term execution, have some longs and some shorts. I kind of favor the shorts today, but we'll see that even though the market's going long and then contingencies and academic resources are standard. Let's take a look at TD Ameritrade ThinkPipes platform. Here's the four screens, how I plan to start the day here in a few minutes once we get back to the day trading portion. Let's look at the overall market, you zoom out, Nine months, pretty much straight up. A couple of hiccups in here. All the trend lines are up. It's going to continue really. Uh, you know, we may be arguing about, <clears throat> excuse me, this infrastructure bill for weeks, hopefully not a month. I mean, I think we should be able to find some middle ground and get it passed, uh, you know, before the end of August. You know, July 4th was the goal. Yep, that's we're, we're, we're past that if you haven't noticed. Um, but after that, though, is when I think you're going to see the tax code stuff starting to hit pretty hard. Uh, obviously, we'll have to make some strong decisions at that point. All right, zooming in on the five day of the spy, basically just churn, churn, churn sideways uh, for five days there with a little bit of volatility along the way. All right, let's go back to <clears throat> CNBC.com and take a look at these futures at, of which I reference. All right, here we are, and we will get them refreshed. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so you know yesterday had the, the, the move down in the Dow, if you will, a little bit down in the S&P, uh, but certainly the um, uh, NASDAQ was up, was up nicely. So you're probably in the green in your portfolio if you're with me. Um, all right, going around the world to Europe. Europe is pretty light trading and mixed. Asia also pretty light. Uh, gaming stocks, uh, remember yesterday they made fun of the, uh, they made fun, uh, they called out uh, Tencent Holdings as uh, opium uh, for kids and was talking about the negative effect of video games on society. You know, Chinese folks have stuff right sometimes, right? I, I'm, I'm not sure there's a, there's a big gain of the video game world other than, I mean, obviously there's some tech, not technological proficiency to it. There's some uh, working in groups. Uh, there, I, I mean, I'm trying to, trying to say something nice, but it's a whole lot of wasted time, right? They could probably be used more productive. So anyhow, they're probably not too, too wrong, but also, you know, ATVI, Activision, uh, Blizzard, Blizzard, don't know how, which one it said there, but, um, you know, crushed earnings. So they're making money off of it. So things go, market goes higher. So I like that. All right. Uh, let's look at bonds. Uh, 1.2 on the 10 year, still pretty low there. Skipped oil. Let's check that out down to 68, getting closer to that 40 to 60 range we like. Gold and silver, largely sideways. Uh, crypto selling off. Don't know the storyline behind that this morning. Maybe we'll see it in the headlines. Uh, if crypto sells off and you hold uh, MSTR, Ethereum, ETH, E, uh, they're going to sell off too. So, it, there is diversification value because they tend to move opposite the market. It's not pure, kind of like gold doesn't always move opposite the market, but um, consider. All right. Wolf Research calls Robinhood uninvestable. Do not YOLO this stock. Leave your diamond hands at home. Uh, get your lettuce hands out because 
this so it became a little bit of a meme stock yesterday as everybody's buying it well if you go when remember when you go to short a stock you know and they didn't they were not crushing shorts people were trying to short it yesterday and to be able to short a stock one thing i didn't know is where so i know that the big brokerages actually keep a pool of the stock available for shorting that i did know okay but they also in addition to said pool that's dedicated for this exact purpose they can reach into any margin account so like let's say steve's margin account they can reach into my margin account if i have robin hood long and i have a whopping one share they can come into my reach in without telling me they can reach into my margin account grab my share and loan it to somebody and sell it yeah and now obviously if i re if i log online and i sell mine well then they got it you know fancy uh you know a whole bunch of electronic uh tracking going on behind the scenes for that they have to replace my share and borrow somebody else's share um but yeah so that allows that float to increase a little bit well every time you borrow something to uh be able to short they charge you a fee now if you just hold it day during the day you don't get charged a fee but if you hold it overnight you get charged a fee the the fee yesterday for robin hood stock if you are going to hold it for generally if you held if you shorted um uh, Facebook, because you don't believe in technology. Uh, so you short Facebook and you hold it for a year. Generally, that would cost you about 7%. To short Robinhood, the annual percentage rate yesterday on it was 90% to short it. Well, you can only make 100%, and that's if it goes to zero. Well, Robinhood's not going to zero. So who's paying that kind of number? And so, you know, kind of crazy numbers out there. Uh, yeah, I do agree. It's uninvestable. Do not YOLO the stock. All right. Uh, put your keep your laser high laser eyes off your uh, off your <laughs> off your social media if you've seen that nonsense. All right, GM shares bouncing uh, back after selling off yesterday. Bunch of analyst calls. Uh, AMC got a hard sell call again, saying there's no way that uh, unless they're curing cancer or selling crypto, AMC just ain't worth anything like it's like it currently is. It's just crazy. Okay, uh, stockholders file to sell another 100 million shares of Robinhood. Hello, dilution. It's technically not dilution. Uh, I read the article that explained it. I still don't understand it, but this was kind of pre-planned, so don't get too mad. But yeah, another 100 million shares are out there. Yay. Guess what that does to the stock price? drops it. All right, here's an Ethereum headline activated. It's London hard fork, and it's really a big deal. I will need to read that. I don't understand the London hard fork at all. Okay, let's take a look at these charts, though. See if there's any other headlines of note here. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's go to Finviz and pull up the one I like, MSTR. Now, it's a high price point. It's up in the 600s, but I do like this chart from it it blossomed up here in February. I don't remember why. That was probably Bitcoin 63,000 um, was probably back here, right? And then it sold off down into the 600s or down to the 450 or so. Uh, I guess it did touch four a little bit, but mostly 450 to 500. Well, that's a pretty good time to get in, right? And again, if you're, if you're investing in MicroStrategy, you get two ways to win. They do have a software firm that is out there and makes software. So good, right? Uh, losing money hand over fist. That's what that says. But <clears throat> they, a couple thousand employees, you're really betting on the jockey here and you're betting on Michael Saylor that he is right uh, as far as the, you know, his big bet on um, Bitcoin. So what he did was he took Bitcoin, he took the money on his balance sheet and borrowed more and went out and bought Bitcoin with it. So if you're holding this name, it is far more tied to Bitcoin than it is whatever is software does. <clears throat> so he kind of went all in on it. So that's why I like it as a proxy. So consider, if you want to try out the for Ethereum, <clears throat> uh, full disclosure, I don't have any of this personally. Um, so it's second tier in my book to um, MSTR. <clears throat> a few minutes here. So here's your grayscale. I'm, I'm going to spoke like 17 times this morning. Grayscale Ethereum Trust 
uh, up 10%. That was yesterday. That's not today. It'll probably, it'll reverse that today. But anyhow, you can look at these guys on your own. Or if we have time afterwards, we come back and look at them. It's the best way to own Ethereum, in my opinion, without owning it directly. All right, I'm going offline. We'll get it set up for the uh, opening in just a second. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the on time on target play of the day. Here's the bell. All right, Thursday morning is underway. We've got four screens in front of you. You've got a one minute chart here on the SPY, which is the S&P 500. That looks correct. All right, we got high max long, which is a little low volume earlier. So a lot of volume right now, and it's going in the wrong direction. So let's skip. We'll just have to check back on it. Wayfair was kind of our number one earlier. It was up like Gosh, seven, eight percent, and then sold off down here, crushed earnings. We'll keep that up for a second. Okay, Etsy was falling off hard. Uh, like I said earlier, it was more of a subscriber issue that it had. Uh, so it's down 12 percent. It is backing up. I don't know if I can short it here since it's out of the range. I don't really like it. Uh, all I do is win, win, win until the market opens, bro. Because look at this. Yep, off it sells. It'll be in the red here soon. Just wait for it. No, we're not going to short it because all they do is win. No, they don't. But anyway, uh, we'll see what happens with it. Maybe I'll be able to exit <laughs> the win position uh, today. All right, let's look at another couple of names. We had free market here. Uh, that's who we've got up. Roku would be a short. Let's take a look. Okay, this is set up much better. Tough price point at 400. Um, <clears throat> you do have Wayfair Long here if you like this. It was up at 275 earlier. You'd have to go with a $2 stop. Low of the day, 250. No, it's too far up. It's already back to 5%. Can't do that. I kind of like this entry at Etsy, but I'm not going to take it. All right, over to Roku. Backing up, setting the high of the day. We'd have to have a $4 stop. So 386 is the entry point short here. Let's take this one. I do like the short look here. So 386 covering right at 390. You'd have to pad it by like uh, 10 cents or so. So we go 386.10 is the entry point here. For Roku there, it hit it. 386.10 is the move to the downside. We are taking the short. We are covering it at... Put your stop loss in here at 390.10. And it's a $4 stop. So do some math, 382.10 right there-ish. 378.10 is way down here. So off the, uh, off the chart, I'll just draw a line down there so we have one and then we'll keep an eye on it. So we are in Roku short again, uh, beating earnings, but missing their subscriber numbers, et cetera, et cetera. All right, Etsy's continuing to back up. You can't take that. Uh, Wayfair's continuing to go higher. Missed our entry on that because I didn't have the faith in it. All right, let's look at that SYRS. Seros Pharmaceutical. This was a long, you can see it had gapped up over a dollar there off of its earnings and kind of selling off there. So you really can't hop into that name. All right, Uber is another name that had, again, beat earnings. So you'll see it pop up here and then it was selling off. So let's go out a little bit further. So here you can see it must've been right yesterday, right after the bell, look at that move down. So it was at 42 down to 37. So that's almost a, it's like a 9% down. It's really bouncing. I would say Uber is kind of a popular name, kind of like Didi over in China, right? Kind of a popular name. So I don't expect it to continue to, uh, to sell off uh, too much. All right, we're in the one trade, we're in the red in that trade. We'll see how it holds up. Let's look at some other names. Uh, I did say the DD word, let's, uh, let's take a look. Is it below 10? Uh, yes, sir, it is way below 10. It's down at 950, so we aren't gonna look at that very long. Uh, let's move to Baba, probably in the red as well, yep. 1% in the red after a nice move up yesterday. And then let's check out KWeb real quick. Oh, down two and a half percent. Let's not look at that anymore either. All right, find something we do like. Uh, let's see, it's MSTR. All right, I knew that was gonna be down. 
um, because of Bitcoin's down. But you can see the move that it's made all the way from 600 to 675 in the past two days. And now it's down at 650. Um, if you're going to hold this, you really don't care what the day-to-day -day price is. You buy it and you move on. Okay. Uh, and maybe you make money and maybe you don't, but you certainly don't want to be moving it. I mean, unless you're trading, but you really just want to buy it for the, uh, for the thesis and then hold. So the Bitcoin thesis, I'll get more into this when I do my special, which it looks like it's going to be Saturday now, because I'm not going to get to it tomorrow. Um, is really is really this. So a couple of countries out there have adopted uh, uh, cryptocurrencies as their primary currency. And yes, these are not mainstream countries, but they are you know countries and they are real people. Uh, they go with it. And when I was the article that I read, it was if the U.S. government tried to ban Bitcoin, it doesn't work because you can't really. It's like banning the euro i mean it, it, if you're not can't really, i mean money is a social construct right and the u.s has a primary system called the u.s dollar and everything associated with it. now that doesn't mean other other monies can't exist i mean and if people choose to transact in them or you know trade borrow exchange value in them even if it's not you know buying pizza sort of thing um they can right well what is the harm in that and if you tried to ban it, uh, like a couple of countries have, I mean, everybody laughs and does it anyway. Uh, if you ban it, then it goes into the black world. Now you can't tax it. So I think it is going to go mainstream. Uh, I think they are going to try to tax it as an asset class, which honestly, it's not. It's money, right? So, uh, so there's problems with that, which why you don't, you really don't have pure ETFs and things because they're really not securities, right? It's money, or yeah, they say it's money, right? So kind of an interesting place. But what I, why I like Bitcoin the best, there we got busted out of our trade. So I'm like, oh, for life uh, this week on trading. Um, big red X of shame there. Uh, but again, back to the Bitcoin is there's only so much of it. So it's a limited supply. So that, that in itself is attractive. And the people that believe, they believe. I mean, it's straight cult following. So I think if you have a cult following and a limited supply of something, the price goes higher. Kathy Wood has said, and not everything Kathy Wood says comes true. She says this thing's going to 500,000. Now, okay, maybe she's trying to grab some headlines there, but you know, she gets called out on what she says all the time. So she doesn't really shoot from the hip. I think she believes that. I'm starting to believe that too, just because cult following limited supply. So I haven't really been in that situation before where something is qualifies like that, but Bitcoin does. And I'm not going to sit that one out, right? And if it's wrong and it goes to zero while well, I'm out the money, I won't sit there and watch it go all the way to zero, uh, but I'm willing to ride it further down than win. <laughs> anyway, the uh, so consider that's my thesis. I'm going to try to put a lot more intellectual words to that in a dedicated presentation on it uh, this weekend. All right, let's zoom out here a little bit uh, and look at the leaderboard of the day. W-Y-N-N -N at the top 3.4%. Very nice. That's the first. I should take a picture. All right. The tech names, tech names, marijuana up a percent. Black Rock doing well. Blackstone Mortgage Trust. A lot of names in the green here. It's like the red TQLBD. They just went through a name change. I don't know what's going on there. It's a spec name down 36%. Ooh, here's one that hurts. GoDaddy. <clears throat> GoDaddy had earnings last night and they, I think they beat earnings. Let's pull the chart. Uh, should give us the numbers on it. But uh, they got a lot of negative words out there. So man, look at that stock. Uh, 83 down to 73 and sinking like a rock. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I still kind of think, you know, I have friends that work at GoDaddy that are also clients. So I do tend to favor the company. Uh, I have friends that work at Intel too. I don't favor that one. But uh, so, you can, so I can say that I'm not biased here, but I do kind of believe that they are the uh, domain names are a little bit like real estate that you can't make more of them. Now you can always adjust them and there's a lot of letters in the alphabet, blah, 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 blah. But there is only one anchorstarwealth.com. So if somebody wants to have it, they got to buy it from the owner, which is me. Um, 
afterburner dash financials for sale if anybody wants that um but the uh the point being i don't know why they're getting hit here but i'm not inclined really to move out of the name i'll just ride through this but i'm gonna have to take a look and see what's going on all right let's leave the investing world over here and go to back to google chrome and we will check out the catch-up contributions okay uh, if you're not 50 yet, congrats. Good for you. You will be someday. And one of the few good things about it is you get to catch up contributions in your um, IRA. Now, I kind of chuckle about this. So the 6,000 is the current limit, right? So, uh, or maybe 60, no, 6,000. So here, this bullet right here, I'll highlight it. Okay. Here's, here's the fallacy of why this whole thing is kind of stupid. Um, it, it's kind of like I'll, I'll relate it to in the, in the Air Force, they gave uh, pilots a bonus to stay. Well, here's the flaw in that thinking is there's people that were going to stay anyway. So now you're just giving them free money. Um, and there's people that were going to get out anyway. Uh, so there's no way they're taking the bonus. I don't care what number you put on it because they're trying not to lose their wife and kids because they're they you know don't dig the moving all over the planet all over all the time right so so you pour a ton of money onto a problem that really you're only catching a fraction of the people involved and here, here's why i say it with this particular situation if you saved and invested you know starting in your younger days or even 30s um you probably have a sizable nest egg and all this becomes is an opportunity for you, the good early investor to plus up, right? I'm like, okay, I turned 50, guess what? Six more thousand for me, six more thousand, you know, you can put you can put more money away, right? Um, so I'm sorry, it goes up from 6,000 to 7,000, I misspoke earlier. So whoop de do another thousand dollars, but I mean, I'll take it. I'm doing it anyway, right? I'm just maxing the thing out and moving on. Um, people that aren't doing it, aren't doing it. So there's very few, and if there was a whole group of people out there that just turned 50 that need to catch up, you let them catch up by you know an extra thousand into the IRA and an extra 6,500 um, into their 401ks. Those are not game-changing numbers. Those are not even needle-moving numbers. That's those are noise numbers. Now, if you got nothing saved and you're it's either six or seven, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, it, it adds up, but it doesn't make. You don't change somebody, even if they have a $400,000 income, you are not opening the spigot wide enough for it to, to make a difference for their retirement, right? So anyhow, that's what the new law is addressing. Uh, they're giving you one increase, so it's proposed that you'll get one increase at 50, you know, like we have now, they'll probably just leave that in place. And then once you hit 60, now you can put in much larger contributions. And again, the, the gotcha there is you still have to be working. So, you know, the person who did everything they wanted to do and they were able to retire by 60, guess what? Good on you. Have a nice life. Enjoy the beach. So, but the folks that are still working because they have to, or they choose to, whatever, <clears throat> they can now put a ton of money away, you, you know, in preparation for this dream retirement that they may never get to, right? Uh, so it's kind of the right thing. We don't know what's going to be the official proposal and what will get passed, but it's kind of a, a feel good thing. In addition, you've heard the secure 2.0, uh, secure 1.0 move the required minimum distribution where you have to start taking your IRA money out uh, to 72, age 72. Uh, Secure 2.0 is going to kick that out to 75. I would say that has a 99.9% .9 chance of passing because retirees don't want the money, right? And the government's like, okay, we'll grow it some more. We'll tax it later, right? So I think that will pass as well. All right. So that's all I've got for you today. So thanks so much for a check-in in and we'll go look at GoDaddy and what's going on there. It's halted right now. So there you have it. Good times down 12.63%. All right. We will see you guys back tomorrow morning. Have a good one.